It's the grandson of Right Thought. Welcome to the School of Marvelous Light. All of you, little flock, have experienced rejection and hatred in your life. And if you haven't, then you're just not part of the little flock. In this life, you shall have tribulation. But don't fear, for I have overcome the world. The world, everything that you're dealing with today, the things that have knocked you down, the things that have stressed you out, saddened you, hurt you, caused mental distress and psychological distress in your life. Yahushua overcame them all. And he said, follow me. And if you follow him, then you shall overcome. But in the midst of that overcoming, you have to go through the hate, the ridicule, and whatever else it is that they throw at you to try to shake you. And that's why Christ said, if a man keep my saying, I would liken him to a wise man that build his house upon a solid rock. And when the storms of life came and beat upon that house, it did not fall for it was founded upon a solid rock. Your identity, who you are. Like I always say, people think it's strange when I tell them who I am. And it's only because they've never heard it. I understand. It's only because it requires a paradigm shift. Well, everything that Christ gives us requires a paradigm shift. If it didn't, he wouldn't have told us, you have to become a new wine skin. <laughs> or you'll burst. If you hear the new wine and you're an old wine skin, you'll burst. You can't receive it. You can't hold it. You can't take it in. You understand? But if you've been converted, which is what the scripture is always talking about, conversion, changing, being born again, be ye transformed. You see? And in this world, a lot of people like to say they've done that because they've changed the outward appearance. For instance, there's a girl and she dress like a whore, acts like a whore, talk like a whore, walk like a whore. But she says she's been converted. So now she wears dresses down to her ankles, covers her body up, got all her tattoos covered up, wears less makeup, stops wearing all the fake hair. And now she's been transformed, but that's not the transformation that Abba was talking about. Once you hear a cool word out of a sentence, you stop at that cool world, word instead of finishing the sentence to the period. Be ye transformed, how so? By the renewing of your mind. See, it's a specific thing. It's inward, it ain't outward. And that's what has deceived a lot of people, and you all know it. A lot of you brothers in the truth have been deceived by women that have done that. And vice versa. Men have done it as well. Sagging their pants, wearing their Timberland boots all untied. Look at the geese, y'all. They said it's getting too cold around here. We got to go down there in Florida. <laughs> but he got his pants sagging, got his jewelry on, gold teeth all in his mouth. Hair all braided. And then Oh, I come to Christ. Shaves his face, cuts his hair, puts on a suit, starts to talk like the pastor talks, even using some of the same words that he uses. Now I've been transformed. I've been converted. Can't you see that I have? They do all they, that they do to be seen of men. <laughs> I don't know what kind of game you think you're playing and who you think you're playing it with. But we see through the hypocrisy of it all. 
We're not looking for an outward manifestation of your transformation. We're looking for an inward transformation of the renewing of your mind. Because that's what Abba says to do. Rend your hearts and not your garments. Same thing I just described to you. People are rending their garments by saying, oh, I sag, that's wrong. I'm going to change and put this suit on. Oh, I got on this mini skirt. That's wrong. Let me put this long dress on. That makes me righteous. You're just rending your garment, but you're not rending your heart. <laughs> because I'll tell you right now, can a liar do the same thing you did to be converted? What do I mean? You changed your clothes and said, now I'm righteous before God. No longer that sinner that I was. Now, I'm wearing a suit. Well, can a deceiver also do that? Yep, he can deceive in the same way. So then that's not a unique power that you have if the enemy can do the same thing. But what can you do he can't do? Have a converted heart. That's what you can do that he can't do. They have a renewed mind. And when it means renewed, it means all the stuff you used to think and feel inside your body is now different. That's actually what it means. Your internal world was all screwed up. Your internal talking to yourself was all nasty, negative, and hateful. And you know that. When you were in your ignorance, you were very hard on yourself. And to this day, you still struggle with it. Not being hard on yourself. Isn't that right, little fly? But remember, with what judgment you meet, it should be meted unto you. So then give yourself some grace and some leeway to learn yourself before you judge yourself and don't judge a thing before it's time. And that includes you, little fly. I've told you guys before that if you judge yourself harshly, then you will judge other, others the same way. And so, since you're doing other people like that, they're going to do the same thing to you. Because everything is showing you what's going on inside of you. Or as the scripture says, out of the heart come the issues of life. And it also says that the heart is desperately wicked. So to keep watch over it. But most people are not. I made a video, it's called, Watchmen, what are you watching? Now my question to you, people are talking about all kinds of things that they claim are going to come on this earth. All kinds of things that they say God told them. But let me ask you a question. All this judgment that's coming upon the earth is coming because of what reason? And you always say sin, right? God's going to judge the world because of its sins. Well, how does God judge? Man judges outward appearance, but Abba looks on the heart. So then, if your judgment is based upon the status of your heart, what do you think you should be paying attention to? So now, what are people telling you to pay attention to? And that will tell you whether they are of God or not. Because, I'm sorry, when you're talking about someone's life is on the line, I'm not going to waste time playing around with options that might work. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do what does work. Why play a guessing game when you're talking about life or death? Why do that when you don't have to? You don't have to guess about how God judges. He tells you. Y'all forgot that Abba love you. And he loves you better than any person on this earth ever has. In which ways has he loved you that's better than people of this earth? Well, he's never lied to you. Let's just start there. Can you accept that? That the things that the Father is telling you are actually true? That this is not just some cockamamie made up stuff? That the things that he told you will benefit you? If you rend your heart and not your garment, Abba looks on the heart of people. I judge the heart and the reins. 
over and over and over and over. Abba keeps telling you that, but he doesn't love you. And he's just like he says in the scripture, Israelites often say, where has God loved us? How? Um, he told you the truth. Now, what makes a man free? And I think that pretty much solidifies the fact that he loves you. Who you hate, you seek to put in bondage, correct? But who you love, you seek to set free. Correct or not? It's very simple. It ain't even hard. It's just y'all make it hard because y'all don't like to deal with weightier matters. Nobody likes to lift the heavy weights in the gym. So very few people get the heavyweight benefit. They get the little lightweight benefit. You see? They get the barely benefit instead of the whole benefit because they don't lift the weight of your matters. But if you did lift the weight of your matters, then you'd be built up. Then you'd be strong. And just like Yahushua said, you'd be able to stand. It ain't even hard. You'd be standing while they falling because they built theirs on sand. Ain't it easy to understand? They denied the cornerstone. The ultimate teacher, you see? Good morning, my brother. How How you? Feel? I'm feeling good, feeling good. Same yes, to you, sir. brother, same yes, to you. Did you see that? It's all about your heart and the cleanliness and the state of it. Is it fearful? Well, then you got inventory to do before you talk to anyone else. Are you doubtful? Well, then you got some inventory to do instead of anybody else. You hear me today? The state of your heart is what matters most because that's what Abba judges you on. Now, the comforter, the comforter, the one who's going to come and remind you of everything that Christ taught you, what else is he going to do? Correct the world of judgment. Why does he have to do that? Because people are judging outward appearance, aren't they? So see why he has to come and correct the world of their misjudgment? You guys are judging outward appearance. If a man goes to court and he has a lot of money, then more than likely he's going to get off. But if he goes to court and he's a poor man, more than likely he's going to suffer, even if he probably didn't do it. The courts are going to be full of iniquity because of wrong judgment. And because of wrong judgment, hearts have been broken. Houses have been destroyed, businesses have been lost, things have been stolen, names have been dragged through the mud, and it's been all because of false judgment. Quid pro quo. You rub my back, I rub yours. If you do this judgment for you, you'll get this for me, then you'll get this benefit from me and my business. Corruption everywhere. And because of that, no judgment goes forth and people suffer. Everything has an equal and opposite reaction. So what happens when you give iniquity? See? That's why he said, Woe unto who by the offense cometh. You hear that? Woe unto you who started this ripple effect of iniquity in the world. Woe unto you. Just like Cain. Just like Esau. Whenever you start a ripple effect of wrongness, Abba rejects you. Y'all didn't learn that from Cain? Y'all didn't learn that from Esau? Now, what was Cain and Esau's problem? Their hearts. Correct? Was Abba mad at Esau and reject Esau because he was red and hairy? Is that why Abba rejected him? Did Abba reject him because he was not six feet tall? Is that why Abba rejected him? Did Abba reject Esau because Esau wasn't a six-figure earner? Is that why Abba rejected him? Did Abba reject Esau because of his skin color? Is that why Abba rejected him? Why did Abba reject him? Because of his perpetual hatred for his brother. No brotherly love. So if you guys are wondering if I'm telling you the truth about the Ark, that it's brotherly love, then how come God rejects the opposite of that? 
if he doesn't accept the opposite of brotherly hatred. It's very easy to understand what I'm saying to you. Equal and opposite reaction. If Abba hates lack of brotherly love, then he loves brotherly love. Now, what was Esau's problem? Perpetual hatred for his brother. Perpetual. Let it go, Esau. Stop hating him. I can't. But well, then I can't accept you because your heart. Is it any other reason? What about Cain? What was the reason there? Oh, well, uh, it was because he was this skin color. No, it's not. It was because he had a hairstyle like this. He had braids going back. That's why God didn't accept him. Because when Cain was walking around, he was sagging his pants. That's why God didn't accept him. It has nothing to do with any of that crap. He didn't accept Cain's offering because his heart wasn't right within him. And anybody else whose heart isn't right, because there's no respect their persons, anybody else whose heart isn't right, he rejects. It ain't hard to understand, is that? Not hard to understand one bit. So if you were wise today, you'd pay attention to your heart. And if something nasty or dirty has come out of it, then you might want to clean there before you start talking to somebody else. Before you start talking about what anybody else is doing. These people out here, they're this. This gang stalkers are doing that. These people hit me with a do weapon, and that did this. And then they're hiding out in a blue car on the corner watching me. And they're this. And then there's this. And that's all, folks. Well, that's all, folks. Y'all hear me today? That don't mean nothing if your heart is messed up. Because that's going to get you sent to, to the bottomless pit to the lake of fire. What is? Your heart is. So why are you worried about somebody else's? Now, if you can get the beam out of your eye, then you'll see clear enough to see somebody else's heart. So get the beam out today, little Israel. Israel. It would be wise if you did. Shalom, Israel.